Let's talk about heavy hitters on the PC Engine Mini because what's unique about this console is how incredibly expensive a lot of the games are, ranging from a couple hundred bucks to over a thousand. But really, is that all that matters is price or should there be more to it than that? Let's find out together in my top five heavy hitters on the PC Engine Mini. So what's considered the absolute heaviest of heavies on the PC Engine Mini? And very few people would argue that that game has to be Sapphire or Ginga Fuke Densetsu Sapphire or Galaxy Police Woman Legend Sapphire. Talk about a mouthful. Sapphire is the most expensive game by far on the PC Engine Mini, going for over a thousand bucks online these days. But the main reason it's the heaviest of heavies isn't just the price. It's the factor of desirability. People want this game. People covet this game. And the reason? Sapphire was a graphical showcase for what the PC Engine could pull off. You'd be fooled into thinking the game actually uses polygonal models, but no such thing existed back then. These effects were all done with sprites due to the extra RAM on the arcade card. And of course, being a CD game, it's got awesome music too. It was produced by the same Tease Music, yep, that same badass that did Lords of Thunder. Do you hear a resemblance? Gameplay-wise, the controls do get a bit of getting used to as your ship isn't really all that fast to dodge everything that's coming at you. You have to know the levels, expect what's coming, and approach each section with a plan. Same goes for the bosses, which are all spectacular, showing off the reasons why this game is in such demand. So combine people wanting to own this as a showcase for the system with the high price and the rarity of the game itself, and you have yourself a serious collector's item. On top of that, you also have to own an arcade card just to be able to play it. If not, well, you get a consolation prize. Sapphire gets a top score, a 10 in price and a 10 in desirability for being a graphical showcase and a game that collectors want to own. It's not nearly the best shooter on the PC Engine Mini, but it's easily the most impressive. Now I just wanna take a moment and thank all of my subscribers from the bottom of my heart for making this game possible for me. It's your generous donations that have allowed me to quit my job and spend my time making videos showing you my collection that you've paid for. And I know that you could be doing other things with that money, like donating to at-risk kids from poor neighborhoods or something. But instead, you're giving it to me so I can buy games and then show them to you. So thankful. So for my number two heavy hitter, things get a little bit trickier because with PC Engine games, it's not uncommon for so many to cost over a couple hundred bucks, right? So what makes one different than another. And again, for me, it comes down to desirability. How badly would I want this game in my collection? And what makes my next choice unique isn't just the game itself, but the actual console that it was released on. And that is the Super Graphics. A sum total of five games were released for this system. So it didn't do very well before it disappeared. It's extremely rare and goes for maybe a few hundred bucks or more online on the used market. 
But let's take a moment to appreciate the crazy industrial design on this thing. I mean, it looks like a mothership from a 90s sci-fi flick. Now, of course, the Super Graphics didn't just play those five games. It was a souped up version of the PC Engine. So it played all previous games in the library as well. And the number one bestseller for this system was Dai Makamura, AKA Ghouls and Ghosts. This game is classic. It's widely considered a 10 out of 10 game. And the Super Graphics port is an excellent arcade conversion. Now, while it can't quite match up to the original CPS board, it was by far the most faithful conversion of the generation. Well, for those that can beat it anyway, because it ain't easy. This version of the game is one that I, and most others, really never got to play back in the day because of its rarity. But we sure wanted to. What we did play is Ghouls and Ghosts on the Genesis, which I personally still have a big nostalgia for. Dai Makamura is a souped up, more difficult and closer to arcade port of the same game. Now, I love them both as I grew up playing the Sega version like most of us did, but no doubt seeing them side by side, you can definitely see the differences. Playing them? Boy, can you really tell the difference. I always found the Genesis version a bit easy. Uh, the Super Graphics version will kick your ass. No practice mode here. The first playthrough is as tough or harder than the professional setting on the Genesis. And to top it off, you've got limited continues. But it's a fantastic game. And if you want the nearest authentic arcade experience, this version is where it's at. Given there was only five Super Graphics games and they're all rare, any one could be considered a heavy hitter. And this one isn't nearly the most expensive. But as much as I enjoy Aldines, another really cool and actually more expensive Super Graphics game, also on the Mini, if I had to choose between the two, it has to be Daimai Kamora. A five in price, it just may be a couple hundred bucks, but a solid eight in the must own category. This game is a great port of a phenomenal series. Don't forget to click the link in my caption and buy your very own jar of Shmup Junkies Thumb Chum. I'm gonna need to sell like several hundred of these to be able to afford that PC Engine LT that I've been wanting so bad. So come on guys, we can do this together. For my third choice, we're going with a game that is essential. One that's unanimously considered the must own game on a PC Engine, both then and now. And of course, I'm talking about the greatest traditional Castlevania game of all time, Konami's masterpiece, Rondo of Blood. Rondo is a 10 out of 10 in every measurable category. During the 90s, this is the game that turbo owners would flock to their Sega buddies on being one of the best games of the generation. Aside from the fantastic graphics that rivaled just about any other 16-bit game in the series, it had a CD soundtrack that can only be called Legendary. Rondo was the pinnacle of the traditional style Castlevania games before they shifted to the Metroidvania style of Symphony of the Night. But did you know that over half the graphical assets for that legendary game were taken directly from this one? They are companion games after all. I was a huge fan of the branching paths in Castlevania 3 on the NES, and they make a big comeback here. Instead of a linear affair, Rondo provides a replay after replay saving your game as you go along, trying to find every alternate path, level, boss, and secret to uncover 100% of the game. And it was only available in Japan, 
until many years later with ports to newer systems. Rondo is an undisputable 10 in the desirability category. So that mixed with its couple hundred dollar price tag makes it an absolute no brainer for this list. Okay, so it's most of the way through the video now and I'm not seeing those orders. If you guys want me to be able to keep making these videos for you, you gotta pick up the pace. You can't expect me to be able to afford all these games unless you help fund it. So come on, click that link. And then there were two. And for my fourth pick, I'm going to go with Soldier Blade. I'm sure you were probably wondering when that was gonna happen, but you have to go with Soldier Blade. Priced at a couple hundred bucks for the import and easily over double that for the US release, Soldier Blade is arguably the best top-down shooter on the console, definitely on the Mini. Now, I've already covered this game plenty in my previous Caravan video, so if you're interested, check it out in the link above. For now, just enjoy a short montage of the awesome that is Soldier Blade. Soldier Blade gets top scores from me. While it may not be as high profile as something like Lords of Thunder, it's a game that absolutely any PC Engine fan and every shooter fan would have in their collection. I've got some really bad news, guys. Last night, somehow the game room window got left open and a horde of locusts invaded the neighborhood. They somehow got into here and they shit all over everything. The games, the consoles, it's ruined. It's gonna cost me like over $8,000 to get all of this cleaned up. I don't know how I'm gonna be able to continue making videos for you guys. I really need your donations now more than ever. So please check out my link. Also, I still really want that PC Engine LT too. For my final pick, I'm going to mix things up a little bit and go with a surprise. Instead of choosing another game like Lords of Thunder or Aldines or Erzonk, uh, anyone which would qualify for the list, I'm going to do something a little different. And I'm going to choose the PC Engine itself. Because aside from maybe the Neo Geo, you'll have a hard time finding a mainstream, well-selling console that's so expensive to collect for. And I want to highlight this because it's a big reason why this Mini is so important, especially in parts of the world like the US, UK, Europe, that didn't get to experience its full library, like Japan did. So when I come across elitists that are trashing the console for unreasonable things, exaggerating flaws, calling certain things unplayable, as if other mini consoles don't have the same metrics, I take it a bit personally, because they're robbing a lot of good people, gamers, from being able to experience some really cool games for the first time. And that's why I'm going with the PC Engine itself as my final pick, a 10 in price for how expensive it is to collect for with all the CD-ROM systems and cards and everything that you need to be able to play the games, and a 10 in demand for those games themselves and how incredibly rare and difficult it is to collect them as well. So if you don't already have a way to play a lot of these games, the PC Engine Mini is an excellent place to start. Guys, we finally did it. You won't believe it. You opened your hearts, and I'm so excited to finally show you my new LT. Next video, we'll do an unboxing dedicated to this beauty. What's that? Oh, my game room? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was able to get all that cleaned up. It worked out great. Didn't even cost nearly as much as I thought it would. But don't worry, I promise to use that money for a really good cause. I've been thinking about starting a Neo Geo collection. Now, I know that's gonna be really expensive, but wouldn't you love to see that? It's just gonna take a lot of funds, so you know what to do. Clicking subscribe and hitting that bell.